Here is a simple demonstration, start to finish, covering how to use the Web ID protocol on the Windows platform. So what I'm going to do right now is um, use Internet Explorer for this particular demonstration. The very first thing I have to do is generate a personal certificate for myself that is stored on this machine. So I click on the OpenLink X509 Certificate Generating Wizard, which is a one-click Windows application to achieve this particular goal. Now, I have a number of options here for the type of certificate that I would be generating. Now, if I was starting from the absolute beginning of this process, I would have to generate a CA Authority certificate and then use that certificate to sign the personal certificates that I'm generating. I've already performed that step and it isn't really that different from what I'm about to do right now. So, there's my client certificate process starting. So I type in my name or my full name. Then organization, I say personal, data space, network, ODS, something like that. My email address. My data space URL. So that's my personal data space set up, my email address, the organization, and my name. Who is issuing this certificate? As I mentioned earlier, I am set up on this machine, which I own, to be a CA authority. So I can certify the certificates that I generate for myself. I can also add a friendly name. I can just say, well, Web ID demo, for instance. And then the next set of options determine where I actually place this particular certificate. So I could install this to the Windows Certificate Store or database. I could save this to a, a file, a PKCS12 file, for instance. I could simply just export it. I could view it. Now, what I want to do right now is actually save this certificate to the Windows Certificate Store. Now, two things have happened. The write to the store has been done, but I've now been given an option to copy the public key component of this certificate which is a very critical step with regards to the Web ID protocol, as you're about to see. So again, I have stored my certificate and its private key to the Windows certificate um, store or database, and now I am copying the public key component to my clipboard temporarily. So I exit. The next thing I do is now log into my data space. Or oh, before I do that, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do, pardon me, is go into my data space. So, I'll like that. So, I'm going to click Edit. And basically, what I'm going to do in my data space is use the security feature here to associate this most recently created public key with my web ID. So again, my web ID is maintained, managed by my data space. And what I'm doing here is simply adding a public key to my data space and then by hatching this checkbox, indicating that 
this public key should be used for web ID protocol based authentication when I or anything else tries to access this data space. So I am now saving this public key to my data space. The end result is that there is an association of the public key and my web ID all happening within this space that I own. To really see the effect of this, um, what I'm going to do is go to a space on the web that supports the web ID protocol. So let's go to fof.me for example. When I click the login button here, a number of things will happen. Now as you can see, I have two certificates presented to me. And that is because fof.me has asked me to identify myself using an X509 certificate. I have two in my particular um, Windows certificate database or registry, and so I can use one or the other. Now let's take a look at what I created a few steps ago. So as you can see, there's my name, there's the issuer, also myself. You can see it was done today. And you can see, again, there is an indication that this certificate is associated with a private key. Anyway, I'm happy with all of that, and so what I want to do is log in. So I simply click OK. Now what is happening right now is that a lookup has occurred between both me and my data space. That lookup is the essence of the Web ID protocol. Basically, the public key components in my Windows-based certificate have been compared against the public key components in my data space. And the conduit to that happening is my data space URL, my structured profile URL. My profile is structured because I use the full ontology to provide a very clear description of myself with my web ID as the center of all of those attributes that constitute the description and digital representation of me. Now let's take a look at a different data space, Stack Overflow. Now, one of the things about Stack Overflow, um, I'm going to quickly log out, is that Stack Overflow uses OpenID. Now, so far, we've talked about the Web ID protocol. Now, via Stack Overflow, I'm now going to demonstrate the Web ID and Open ID hybrid protocol. So, from the perspective of Stack Overflow, I am presenting it right now. I am presenting it with a normal OpenID URL. But in reality, when I click login, the OpenID protocol message sequencing is rerouted to the WebID protocol by my data space. And once again, I have a choice of certificates that I use to identify myself. Most important of all, there is no username and password involved in this process. So I click OK. Internet Explorer gives me a little caution because, again, it understands that this certificate has been self-signed. I tell it I absolutely know what I'm doing because I know who I am. And I'm in. Nice and simple. So I have been across three different data spaces 
without typing in a username and password. That's the beauty of the WebID protocol. Thank you.